Welcome to video number 27 of the Quick Strike video series for February. Uh, today we are finally going to cover the option matrix. Uh, and if you cl have clicked this menu before, you're going to see there's a little bit of difference now with this latest build that was released this morning. Uh, before we get started over there, let's, um, let's remind ourselves where we are. Again, we're on the market dashboard, product overview page. Today, um, our favorite product is Euro dollars in the interest rates or, or U.S. rates product group. Uh, and I chose Euro dollars because it has uh, probably the most diverse matrix uh, of all the product groups. So that'll give you a good idea of how it works uh, in very great detail. And as always, I can select that favorite product over here in the My Account section and change my group and product as, uh, as the market changes uh, for me and my trading. So let's get started on the option matrix. Let's pull down this menu and take a look and, uh, and, and, and talk about what we're seeing here. So... Uh, Everything that was available prior to this morning's release is over here. Um, and all the new stuff is over here and we mark it as beta because as confident as we are in what we uh, have released, we still have it out there uh, as a beta because it might change. We might get some suggestions. We might add some tabs, might add some, a uh, little bit of functionality that um, that's not quite there yet. So, or if there is a bug, um, it's not necessarily unexpected, but you know, for all intents and purposes, it should work. Uh, fairly well. Um, we've been playing with it quite a bit and uh, pretty happy with it. So uh, everything that happens over here in the value matrix is going to is now going to be available over in three parts on the price volatility and open interest and volume matrix. Now I'm going to step over here for a minute and, and these will be all of these will be up here for for a period of time while uh, people make the transition. But um, I'm going to just show you what it looks like here. So we see a little bit of the difference. So um, the big thing is so right now you see the matrix value here. And if I wanted to change where we were at any given time uh, on this grid, I had to open up this matrix value drop down and then choose accordingly. Okay. Uh, the expiration filter is going to be the same auto calculate uh, plus minus strikes used to be over here in both versions. And now we moved it over here. So it's more obvious uh, to, to increase or decrease the number of strikes you see in the grid. So, the big change you're going to see is when I come over here, we've separated these now. Instead of showing everything in the single dropdown, we've separated these by group. And typically, you know, these are the these are the areas you're going to be working in at any given time. And we just felt like uh, it, it made a little more sense to finally go this route because we are going to try to expand the matrix uh, functionality as much as we possibly can because I really find them to be very useful when looking at things in the aggregate. Okay. So prices, volatility, open interest. Let's take a look at the prices. And the immediate thing that we're going to see is different is now there's no drop down anymore, but now there's a bunch of tabs. Okay. So anything that's related to prices, you know, we have the current prices, uh, the settlements, and then the Greeks is, is, is now, uh, is now in this prices section. Okay. So, uh, we made that, we made that distinction and saying, though, this is related to what, what comes out of the pricing model. Okay. So, uh, as you can see, uh, the, the grid looks generally the same. I think it's just a lot easier to use by seeing the tabs and you immediately know what's available to you from a selection uh, standpoint um, right in front of you. Now, we don't really need to visit all, all of these uh, tabs uh, on on uh, on this page, really, because they're pretty self-explanatory. Um, but I will explain uh, this section here. Settles, um, settles, settles in Greeks are, you know, they kind of speak for themselves, but let's just talk about what the, the structure of this grid is going to look like. So prices, when we on the when we're on the prices and or the settles tab, we're going to see if uh, if you see a gray background here, that means it's the at the money strike. So when when something's at the money, you're going to see the straddle price, and then you're going to see out of the money put prices and out of the money call prices. So that's what prices are. So it's going to be like the options that would typically trade in those strikes. Okay. When calls is going to show all calls, puts is going to show all puts, and straddles is going to show all straddles. So that's the big difference there. Settles is going to do the same thing with settlement prices, except, you know, it's going to show, instead of the current price, it's going to show what the settlement price was for these strikes. So same thing, background, gray background is the, at the money straddles, then out of the money puts, and out of the money calls. Okay, and then same thing again, all calls, all puts, all straddles. And then the Greeks are the Greeks. I'm going to show you the deltas. And what you're going to see here is going to be related to uh, what the prices tab would show you. So out of the money delta on the downside, out of the money delta on the upside, and then the straddle delta on the highlighted region. Okay, so that's really the crux of how this thing works. Now, uh, as as uh, we've seen before on a lot of the pages, right, any, any symbol you see uh, is going to be clickable. So if I click on that, I'm going to get my, um, well, let's see, I, we, we're not trading today, it's Saturday, so you 
we'll have to go to our previous day to see a, a futures price, but you're going to get the futures underlying if you click on a future symbol. So we've grouped these by future symbol up top, and then we've shown them in uh, expiration order here down below. So we have future symbols in this top row with the days to expiration and what the settlement prices or the current prices, in this case, it's the settlement price. And then we have the expirations and it's again, these are clickable. So if I click on this, I'm going to get the expiration pop up. Okay. Nothing going on intraday because it's Saturday, uh, 30 day history of volatility and all the things you've come to expect up here uh, from a pop-up standpoint. Um, then also, uh, really the the reason behind this next thing you see the strike pop-up the matrix is really the reason behind the strike pop-up so given that we're on a matrix that has more than one expiration you know we can now easily open up the different uh expirations here and take a look at things in detail rather quickly okay so uh, the matrix was what spawned uh the strike detail all right so that is essentially how these work okay and you have the option to turn like the, this top header is always going to be on there's an option to turn this bottom header off i like to have it on just because when i scroll down in case i have uh, too many on the screen i always know where i'm at and of course you're always going to get your your uh, crosshair targeting highlight here so you really have a pretty good idea where you are now what you should come to expect just as a little precursor there's going to there's be some um some interesting additions made to this where we'll start doing some strip calculations and some grouping that kind of thing maybe some customized pop-up boxes depending on what tab is present but you know we'll keep you abreast of that as we release more videos uh, when the functionality merits uh, some updates uh, to uh, to the information that's out there okay so just as a, as a, a, a quick run through of what's up here. So this expiration filter has changed before it used to be pretty straightforward where you just got to pick the entire group. But now what you can do is you can turn off an entire group, but you can also um, turn off uh, particular items within that group. So if I want to turn off all the serials in this white group and say, okay, then I can just, then I'm just looking at all the calendars here now. Okay. So pretty simple, straightforward. So I can turn off all of these, turn off all of these, and I'll turn on the blues instead. So much easier to control now. I did click it. There we go. All right. Did I, what did I do? Did I leave them on? Oh, I turned off everything, which gave me everything. So I need to click this and this. Okay, here we go. Now we'll get the blues. I had no check boxes, so it assumed everything was on. So now I have all the blues and the short blues. So some, some neat stuff that you can do here. Um, so and then also a nice thing, which I like about this, me personally, is I could turn off these weeklies because as much as they're interesting and going to be valuable at some point, they're not quite valuable just yet. So now I have a nice, concise uh, looking little screen here with all the information in the blue part of the curve. Okay. Then I'm going to go over here, the auto calculate section. So what we can do, if I turn out, if I check this group totals, let's take a look and see what happens here. Right now we're on prices. So we consider a group uh, to group to be uh, each of these. Okay. So the blues are a group in and of themselves. So when we see this group total, it's going to sum everything across here. Everything across the row is going to get summed. So you're basically seeing a strip for this strike. Okay. So now if I show column totals, let's do that. So we should see everything totaled up here that's showing that's currently displayed everything showing up here so now we're going to get a price all the way up and down doesn't make so much sense here from a price standpoint but when we start to look at the other stuff like open interest and volume it's going to be pretty interesting to look at okay so we're going to turn that one off and um i can show row totals and what you're going to see here is a duplicate okay of what you're seeing here so let's let's see how that differs now let me turn on let's go turn on the whites again and we might get a little bit of a yeah, so we, we still fit on the screen. But now what you see is we have group totals for the whites and then group totals for the blues and then total totals. Okay, so so there's some there's some nice auto calculating that you can do here by turning those checkboxes on. And then, uh, interesting enough, you can show average values. And this isn't so valuable from the euro dollar standpoint, but they do this a lot in the energies, the, uh, the WTI in particular. Okay, so let's turn off uh, this white section again and say, okay. And now we're back to where we are. All right, so auto calculate. This lets you do some summing and averaging uh, within the grid itself. Okay, and then less strikes will shrink this down by a handful, and more strikes will increase this by a handful. Okay, so now it's right in front of you instead of being over here. It was the buttons were a little bit hard to see sometimes, and not, uh, not everybody, it wasn't very obvious to a lot of people, so we just decided to make it a little bit more obvious. Okay, so this is the uh, the price matrix. Now let's take a look at the volatility matrix. So again, um, 
pretty self-explanatory. Click on a tab, you're going to see the volatilities here. So right now you're seeing all the volatilities for the for this for each strike. Uh, everything's clickable like it was before. Um, so we have uh, in the in the euro dollar case we have its volatility, then a black shoals volatility, and then a basis point volatility. Which if you've listened to the videos before, that is the same as the volatility running up here as the default. And then we're seeing other things like price skew, vol skew, and vol step. So these are uh, like vol skew, for instance, is just going to tell you the difference between the at the money and uh, and the wing ear option. All right, so it's a nice way to see how much volatility is pumped up on those wings. And then vol step um, is just another version of that, but with differences between the strikes. Okay, so um, this is the volatility section. I, I I use this quite a bit, especially when I'm um, especially when I'm uh, looking at the euro dollars. It's always uh, it's always sort of uh, enlightening to to take a look and see what the, see what the vols look like across the board all at one time. So that's the mate, uh, volatility matrix. Okay, now uh, the open interest and volume matrix. So what you're going to see here is just as you expect uh, the open interest and volume numbers, but now we got them segregated out. So you can see all the call open interest, the put open interest, the total open interest, and the changes, and then the percent changes, and then you also have uh, volume information and then change information day over day. So now I really like this. If I'm looking, I can look at the total open interest in a particular strike. You're going to see some uh, some some good numbers here. And um, and what I can do here then is this is where this row total and group total come into play. So now I could see what the open interest is across an entire strike here very easily. OK, so let's go to something else. Uh, let's go to the whites here. I'm going to turn off this stuff. I'm going to show you something which is pretty interesting. Uh, go over here to the whites. OK. And what I what I always what I find uh, neat, especially here in the euro dollars, is that look you have you have par calls basically zero interest rate, and there's a, quite a bit of open interest in that one. So this is a real easy way to to see the totals across a particular strike. And then we also have column totals, and I can click on this. And so what you're what you're seeing here is uh, these are the totals for each. So you get the open interest in March. Now the most important thing to keep in mind here is that. Uh, this is the open interest for all of the strikes that are currently showing. Okay, so this is a sum of what's showing. So the open interest may be bigger in this particular expiration uh, for the strikes that aren't showing. So what we're working on is a way to have uh, to have a totals box down below. If the totals are on, that then you'll see the total that's showing, the total in in general, and then the aggregate in general. So so that that is sort of a, an enhancement we're going to make. But right now the if you want to call it limitation, is that it's only summing what you're seeing uh, uh, on the screen. Okay, so um, that is uh, that is the option matrix, column one, price matrix, volatility matrix, open interest and volume matrix. Everything you saw here is it can be done in the old version. I just feel like this is um, a more intuitive version and just lays things out in front of you more easily uh, for you to really investigate more quickly and more thoroughly so, uh, so you have a pretty good idea what's going on. All right, so we will uh, stop there for today. Uh, we will probably come back at some point and talk about uh, these bottom two. These are specific to, uh, this one is specific to the spread finder, specific to the euro dollar. So that may be a while before we before we touch on that. And uh, ATM ratios, we'll talk about that at a later time. Uh, but for now, uh, you have pretty much exhausted the entire menu structure. Uh, we have a couple more videos left here uh, in the month. So we, I think I have one other idea for the next couple of days, and then we might do a summary uh, demonstration one more time, just uh, as a sort of a, a day in the life of using QuickStrike type of thing. So thanks again for taking the time to watch, and we will talk to you soon.